How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Six Killer. Welcome back to Second Maya. Now, in the last episode, I believe it was the last episode, Isla passed away while when she fell into one of those cabinets and then teleported and then teleported back. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's not looking good. Uh, Edna is not doing so good as you can probably imagine. I'm not too sure what's going to happen, but uh, there might be a way to bring her back at this stage. It's very recent, and you know, time travel. As Sai had done, we closed the door behind us. I knew Shiroya had spent plenty of time silently mourning our loss, so I understood her. Repeating it was unbearable, and I needed to occupy myself with something after sitting for so long. She also must have agreed that Sai's behaviour was off. He'd even openly accused her earlier, so her impression of him had to be poor. Let's check the event room first. We headed there and verified that the second mile was still present. I looked behind the cabinet and saw the cord plugged into the outlet too. Next we moved to the bathrooms. Although the doors were closed, neither one was locked, and Sai wasn't inside. Looks like he really took this chance to do something. If he went to a bathroom above, Katai would have seen him. I feel like he might have gone to search for the second Mai that we have. It's the one that we hid in the cleaning room. Yeah, it's possible. He's probably somewhere on this floor. Beginning with the hallway B rooms, we kept opening every door and briefly searching for him. We'd learned already which cabinets had interiors large enough to contain a person, and after that had happened to Isla, Checking them was less due to routine and more so necessity. We decided there was no purpose in checking the second Mara in Naomi's locker, since we could have been seen. We didn't want to move it or activate it, and it was possible it wasn't working anyway. It might have moved already. They don't seem to stick around where they left for very long at all, so there's a reasonable chance the one they hid in the locker has already teleported elsewhere. Shinoya sounded hesitant about the decision, but I also hadn't abandoned the thought of using it later too. At the very least, try to find out what had happened to Isla. We entered a room, made sure it was empty, and moved on to the next one. As I was checking the cabinets in the room where we found, first found Naomi, the interior of, one, interior of one of them immediately let me know something about it was different. Upon unlocking it and opening its cover, a frigid burst of air hit my face. Katai had stated that room contained the cabinets with temperature regulation functions, however the previous time we opened them, no special temperature had been set. Shinoya noticed my reaction and came to see if anything was wrong. After feeling the cold air that had begun to diffuse through the room, she checked the wheel on the right side of the cabinet, and set to zero degrees celsius. Hmm. It had to have been changed recently. There's nothing inside, so it's pretty strange. It was a different cabinet than the one that I'd first travelled from, and I wasn't sure what would, what would be done since the second mire hadn't been put inside. When we got the locker key from Naomi, it might have already been like this, so we can't just suspect Sai or Katai. Yeah, and we can't blindly believe Sai's story either. Regardless, whoever did this didn't let the others know, so we should probably revert the temperature. Yeah, the culprit might count on this cabinet for later, if they change the temperature in preparation. If I switch the wheel to room temperature, we should be able to close the lid. I nodded, and she did so before we left the room. It wasn't clear if setting the room temperature would make the inside of the cabinet match the outside, or if it would only stop the regulation, but leaving the lid open, not to not preserve the existing cold could have averted the culprit that their measures, alerted the culprit that their measures had been reversed. We proceeded to the other rooms and resumed the search. We didn't want to waste much time, or we'd become the suspicious ones. As soon as hallway B was done, we began with the parallel hallway. The first room we entered was the storeroom. Continuing with our backwards order, it was one of the smallest rooms on the entire floor and its purpose was still a bit unclear, as it wasn't storing anything that could have been used in the future. Given how small it was, we should have left it immediately, but should I have noticed something that prolonged our stay? Wait, come here. Look at this part of the wall. Shiroya, who'd gone to the end of the dimly lit room, was pointing her finger at the place she wanted me to see. I stepped in, making my way through the cluttered, narrow space. Then, I looked beyond her finger, faintly illuminated by the single light. It took me a while to understand what she meant. She was pointing at the left corner, and after glancing up and down in search of anything out of place, I finally noticed the oddity she'd found. Huh? How'd you even notice this? The wall was dirty and uneven, giving away its old age. You could see the outline of a grid that separated the wall into tiny squares. They were all defined by white lines that had started to fade with time. On one of the squares that made contact with the left wall, Shiroya had seen the slight lack of dust, which was otherwise present over every surface of the room. Even though the poor illumination made it hard to see, what seemed to be fingerprints existed on it. Not only that, but its close surroundings were a bit cleaner than the rest of the walls. From the door, I saw this area reflecting the hallway see light a lot more. 
I don't know when, but it looks like someone touched this corner. I suppose so. But I doubt it means anything. And we can't even be sure it happened today. Hold on, these fingerprints. It's hard to see, but they're not vertical, right? Yeah, they look horizontal. You won't touch any wall with three fingers in this horizontal, horizontal position accidentally. I wouldn't think so. Just touching it would leave them vertical and more separated. I shaped my hand to match the three fingerprints and placed it over them. My arm formed a right angle with the left wall, but it didn't make me understand the meaning of what we'd found. I have no idea why you would touch the corner of a room like this. There's nothing important in this room either. Huh? What? As I removed my hand from the wall, I felt something. Did something happen? When I took my hand away, it seemed as if the square moved a bit. Mm, I didn't see anything. I pressed my fingers on the square again. Instead of pulling away, I moved my hand around. And as I'd thought, it was a bit loose. You're right, it's moving a little. It didn't go anywhere though. I could only move it sideways, and it wouldn't get detached from the wall. This must be why someone touched the spot, but it's not doing anything. Will it move any more? Than that? It was sliding side to side almost imperceptibly. Realising that I'd been applying enough force, I attempted to move it past its se seeming limit. All of a sudden, as if it were a door, the wall opened, revealing a hidden space behind. What the fuck? It's a hidden door. It slid the moving I slid the moving piece to the right, and before I could think, my hand had pushed open the entire wall. It was revealed to be a very th very thin and past it, the corridor extended. They even got secret passages here? What is this place? No light existed on the other side, but it seemed to lead to a narrow partition. There's another door. Yes, but it doesn't have a handle. At first I thought it was just another wall. I tried to push it open, but it didn't move. Where a handle or a doorknob could have been, there were two round holes, a big one with metallic pieces inside, and a smaller one. A smaller empty one. Someone here knows about this, right? Those marks have to mean that someone opened this recently. And no matter if they went through this door, the Cobra could have easily escaped from us if they just hid here. Why was something like this even built in the first place? Might have been part of Ashia's countermeasures to Shin, but that means that Katai would have to know about it. I mean, no matter what it's for, there's no way he doesn't know about it, right? He looks through the cameras all the time. That part of the storeroom felt colder than the rest of the building, likely because the temperature regulation didn't reach it. Still awestruck, I kept examining the door. I think there should be a handle here. When you remove a handle from a with a keyhole from a door, you're left with these holes. I think the small one's where the keyhole would be, and the bigger one is what connects the handle with the turning mechanism. This means that the door can usually be unlocked with a key, but without the handle, we won't be able to open it even if we find the right one. Uh, I guess someone could have unscrewed it on purpose to make sure it's never unlocked again. Yeah, I have no idea what's through here though, but we can't find out. It looks like a sturdy enough door, so it won't open without the handle and the key. I tried a few, time, few more times, but it didn't budge at all. Hey! What the hell is going on? A sudden voice startled us and we turned around instantly. Katai's silhouette was behind us, the single light only hitting his back. We found this hidden section behind the wall. Where does this door lead to? You must be screwing with me, a hidden section? There's no way. You're seeing it right now. Did you not know about it? No, I did not know about it. What is this? Well, look at this. Good find, Atsuki. From behind Katai, another silhouette appeared. Without a doubt, the voice belonged to Sai. She'd already found it, actually. Oh, he finally did something. Good job. Sai's condescending attitude had already resurfaced. He skidded over to us and began to examine the door. Two more figures peeked in from the entrance. As they stepped in, the light revealed that they were the last two remaining people, Akado and Edina. We were going to search for you. Did you take this chance to sneak into your hideout? We actually found it while we were searching for you. So you tell us, where'd you go? The bathrooms here were empty. You're always in a rush as soon as I go somewhere. I just went to the floor too, bathroom, since Nami's still on this floor. Wait, what? No you didn't. I was there. And he definitely didn't come. Alright, let's settle this quickly. Katai's lying. I was up there and he never showed up. I bet he already told you he'd gone upstairs, right? Now, since I revealed I was there, he couldn't back out of his lie, so he chose to accuse me. That's Katai for you. This is getting old. You guys can choose to believe him if you want, but he's only manipulating you. I don't believe a thing that comes out of size fucking mouth. Katai, we found a hidden passage. Stop trying to always be the centre of attention. Let's be quick. Did you leave the bathroom's door open or closed? Closed. I always close doors behind me when I leave an empty room. Unfortunately, he's right. I closed the door. So take him up on his offer and believe me. Now, look at this. Someone removed the keyhole from this door to prevent us from opening it. 
Not only that, but the inner mechanism is broken too. This won't allow for a new handle to be inserted. Whoever the culprit is, they are likely to still be somewhere, so they might be behind the store right now, which is how they kept avoiding being found. Katai, be smart for once and tell us where this goes. You heard me earlier, I was unaware of this hidden partition entirely. You're awful at your job then. Archie must have constructed this for a reason, it's impossible you weren't aware of it. Do you guys not think it might lead to the left side of the tower? You mean outside? Yes. The entire corridor now stretches further than the crystal rooms. I think it might extend far enough to reach outside. That's some hope you've given us. Katai didn't know about this door, so if it leads outside, the alarm shouldn't have blocked it. That's right. I can assure you the alarm did not do anything to this door. Someone did though. The keyhole was removed, probably to prevent us from unlocking it with the key. Isn't that implying that one of us has it? Otherwise the lock would be enough of a barrier. Oh, nothing around here looks modern. If this door is old, the chances of picking the lock are high. Maybe it was done to prevent that. True, yeah. How'd you spot this hidden opening, should we? I saw some light reflecting off one of the tiles. Someone's fingerprints had removed some of the dust in the corner of the wall. It ended up being the way to open it. Listen, this was recent. If, this, if the door leads outside, the culprit might actually have escaped with the handle. This building is situated at the outskirts of town, so the sides and back are never seen by anyone and are empty, grassy fields. I'm sure the police are keeping watch outside, but are probably only at the front, where the entrance and windows are. They shouldn't be aware of this door either, so escaping unseen could certainly be doable. There's no way this leads out of the building. I've never seen the outside of a door from the outside. The outline of a door from the outside. And there's no light coming from behind the door. It's absolutely impossible this kind of way out exists. The gaps aren't big enough to let light pass. Or the door is wider than it seems. Just think about it though. Why would the secret passage be constructed? If they had something to hide in it, hide in it they wouldn't have another locked door past it. They would just hide it in the secret passage itself or this door wouldn't be here locked. In fact, I believe this passage is the secret itself. It must be hidden to not reveal that this door leads outside. If the middle wall didn't exist, the length of the room would reveal it. I think you're right. That's what this partition is hiding. So we're a single door away from making it out. Can we break it down? There's no way. Just look at it. Whoever remo removed the handle knew very well that we couldn't do that. Of course you can. You can break any door down given enough time and effort. I know this is bound to happen eventually, but do you realize what will occur if we manage to force it open? We'll reveal that the second mile has time traveling powers. What kind of consequences will that have? It was very inconsiderate since Editor, who hadn't said anything for a long time, was next to us. Our priority had to be to make it out as soon as possible so that the police could understand what happened to Isla. However, it would com also completely invalidate the recording. Don't get me wrong, I'm not worried. I'm just intrigued. How is it even possible that the Sekimaya exists? How did it make it here without anyone finding out about its powers? These big picture questions are what I'm most lost about. I hit the door and the sound echoed heavily throughout the corridor. I repeated it a few times, trying to be as loud as I could and intended to be heard from the outside. Nobody will come. I refuse to believe this leads outside. I'm more inclined to think the culprit is currently behind this door listening. Is there nothing we can do? Sliding anything through the gaps, for example. What a letter. We're too far from the entrance to be heard, and I doubt anyone is currently looking at this side. Regardless, these gaps are way too thin. Probably too high to hide the door's existence from the outside. It was incredibly frustrating. We might have found an exit that the alarm hadn't affected, but the culprit had made sure to finish the job. Had it been in case we'd found the moving wall, or for a deeper reason. And how did the culprit know about it but not Katai? Why was it there in the first place? Not only did the door lock us inside, but it also produced even more questions. Feeling defeated, we left what had become a narrow, dim corridor to return to the wider, but still dark hallway A. I thought something was noteworthy. Even though a perfect hiding spot existed, the Sekimaru had never been hidden in it. Why? Earlier it had been hidden in the storeroom. That might have meant that one per the person who'd done it had been aware of the hadn't been aware of the movable wall. We'd ignored this little fight between Sai and Katai, but there weren't many layers to it. One of them was lying, and it was nothing new, as they surely lied more than once today already. The fact that one of them had taken advantage of the situation with Isla to act on their own, though, proved that they weren't to be taken lightly. In addition, one of them could have easily been responsible for the cold cabinet should I and I had returned to normal. Mindlessly, we went to the event room. If, we didn't have anyth if it didn't have anything new to tell us, as the Sekimai was still present behind the glass. So it hasn't moved. It's clear that either Sai or Katai didn't go to the bathroom earlier, so they must have had some other business. Good thought. Tell us, Katai. 
What business did you have to justify lying to us? It's time to put an end to this. Sai won't stop lying as much as he pleases, so we'll have to wait until the security footage reveals all his actions. So, do you really believe the footage will be salvaged, even though the cameras are recording? Is it really being saved somewhere? Of course, the computer isn't detecting the system, but as soon as that's solved, it'll have access to all the stored footage. Did you perhaps think you'd be able to roam freely without consequences? No, but I have trouble swallowing that. The culprit made sure to cut our access to the system, but why would they do that if Ashia will come in and be able to look at what happened? That's not all they did though. At the same time, our only method of communication was removed. I believe the reason behind that entire thing is to prevent us from conveying what's happening out while we're still here. It's possible that, once we get out, the culprit won't care about Ashia finding out what happened. You try to make it sound interesting, but it's idiotic. They were able to cut the- to power off the computer, but it turned back on minutes later. So why didn't they choose to keep it off forever? Most likely, the reason they let us use it again was because they'd made sure that the recordings wouldn't be accessible. Additionally, it let us know that somehow they managed to disable our communication method. So to be honest, even though the cameras are still functional, I find it hard to believe what's being recorded will ever be seen. There's no way the culprit would be fine with being seen once we get out. So if we can't access the system, it's dubious Ashia or the police will be able to. I feel you might be right, it would also explain why they keep putting themselves in front of the cameras. Now I understand I'm repeating myself, but what did you think that the security staff member among us, who conveniently avoided giving us information, has lied multiple times and could have had knowledge of the secret passage, is the most likely candidate to have orchestrated this? That's enough, Sai. Is it all you have to say? Of course, once your excuse of the security cameras will prove that I'm right runs out, you have no arguments to defend yourself with. It seems the discussions between those two wouldn't cease until one was proven wrong, definitively. I knew that Sai wasn't any less of a liar than Katai, but if that hadn't been the case, I would have quickly sided with him. Why don't we stop with this and wait until we can leave? Surprisingly, it was Edna who tried to calm them down. Her voice came out like a wind rustling on dried leaves. It's easier to say, but Katai will take advantage of that again. No matter who's in the right, someone is guilty. Although we don't know who it is, can't we lock ourselves up in one place so they can't move around freely? Is anyone opposed to that? Technically, only the culprit should have a problem with it. If that's what Edna wanted, I'd attempt to make it happen. She wanted to avoid any more tragedy and only intended to wait for external help. Locking ourselves up, isn't that going a bit too far? Why would it be? It implies we're all being sincere, and if something happens while we're staying somewhere, that means the culprit was never one of us. Could we even do that if we wanted to? I doubt we can. We can lock the bathrooms, but they're not big enough for all of us. Are there no other places? What about the security room? Didn't Katai have the key for that? We won't be able to lock ourselves in from there. From the inside, the lock can be undone with just the doorknob. What about the lobby? The hallway doors are locked until 9 o'clock. Isn't that right? They aren't. Permission to move ahead is simply not granted until that time. They can be locked though, but I don't have the keys. If we do this, we'll have to commit to it. Locking ourselves in a place with the key to unlock it doesn't prove anything, anyone's sincerity, since they could leave any time they wanted. But that's all we could do if we managed to find the right keys. We won't be able to lock ourselves inside and leave the key out because the doors won't close if the dead body is set. You're thinking about the attic bedrooms? We saw they had a keyhole. One had a working chain. And they're spacious for all of us. Could they work? Wouldn't we run into the same problem? I turned around and after staring at the door for a short time I spoke. I don't think so actually. I can think of a difference that would let us lock ourselves up without being able to leave. The silence let me know that nobody would directly oppose me. I began to walk until I thought of a question to ask. Oh, does anyone have the cabinet key? If we're going to stay put, let's make sure to lock the cabinet too, and keep the key with us. It's possible a duplicate is possessed by the culprit, but there's nothing that actually proves that. Once again, nobody said anything. If not, it still has to be where I left it, on top of that bed in the attic. Let's see if it's there then. We took the stairs up. The elevator had already been out of commission for a very long time. And it was better to keep it like that, as it had caused a few headaches during the short time it had worked. It's actually still here. Good. Surprisingly enough, the key hadn't been taken while everyone had a chance. I picked it up and glanced at the door. I messed with it a little. It appeared to be a double cylinder lock, meaning that to unlock it, the key would be needed from each side, as opposed to the security room's lock. It's gonna work. We won't have to lock it either. How? I went ahead and looked through the drawers I'd inspected earlier. First, I took out the key to the room. 
We'd leave this, we'd have to leave this outside. Now, I'll say how we can technically do this, but it's not exactly a smooth way. The second thing I took out of my, of the drawer was a screwdriver. Admittedly, what I'd thought of had been inspired by the secret door we just found. Removing a handle is incredibly easy. We can take it out, leave it outside, and close the door. Since we'll be unable to turn it, even though the door will be unlocked, we won't be able to open it. That's the big difference with this door, as the handles of the crystal floor don't have visible screws to detach. Since the keyhole isn't on the handle itself, we would need to leave the key outside. Otherwise, we could still get the door open by inserting the key and turning it. Even though the lock wouldn't be set, it would act as a turn of the handle, and the door could be dragged open. On top of that, we could remove the outer handle as well, so the culprit can't easily make their way in. Finally, even though we'd hide the key outside, if the culprit found it and wanted to enter, they couldn't do it. They could find the key and open the door like I just described, but we can set the chain from the inside. If we do this, the door shouldn't be open until the police enter the building. There's no way it'll be broken down. Nobody was sure what to say. Personally, I knew what it meant giving up on the understanding of the second Myers mechanics. But after what had happened to Easter, it was clear that something terrible would come of it. You must be joking. This is Ashia's special place, and we're currently being recorded. Do you not understand what will happen if they see us ripping the handles apart? Honestly, who cares? It'll be easy to reattach them. And we have size watch, so we could do that right as the tower opens. But unfortunately, we have to leave the handles out of the room, or else we could leave at any point. This reminds me, what time is it? It's been a while since the last time I checked it. With a brief sigh indicating that he wasn't fond of my proposition, Sai turned his wrist. I looked at his watch and saw the display time was 1456. Almost 1500 I see. We're past the halfway point. So, with all that's happened, let's spend the last six hours calmly until the police enter and we can have a better understanding of what's been going on. It was an easy way to finally test the recording. If, after we waited those last six hours, nothing happened, we'd have to have a long discussion about it and we'd have no way out of the room. This is what I wanted, thank you. Edna's gratitude was the ultimate deciding factor. We locked ourselves a we'd lock ourselves away from the second mire, ensuring that its powers wouldn't influence our peaceful way. Hopefully, we'd also be preventing the culprit's plan from moving along. I'd go lock the second mire cabinet myself, but we're trying to act together by doing this. Let's avoid separating now and creating chances to prepare anything. Any objection? Sai and Katai rolled their eyes, but they kept quiet. If they were they were alone, since both second mire would be locked into a into place as well. Nobody could use them. Everyone looked uncertain, and Sai looked a bit sad. He made it obvious he was enjoying his time in the tower, so he might have gone from thinking that he had another six hours to play with the time travel device, to realising that it was already over. We entered the event room and saw that the Sekimaru hadn't moved. I made sure that the glass was properly adjusted, I manually locked it. From that point on, only the key that I could open it, I, I knew the key I had could open it. So I possessed the keys to both the Sek both Sekimaru. Regarding the locker key, I'd have to surreptitiously leave it somewhere in the bedroom after waiting a while. That way, anyone could have had it. Finally, we went up again. We'd just gone through staircase 18, staircases 18 times, so we were pretty exhausted. The idea of waiting calmly in a bedroom with three big beds started to sound slightly more pleasant. We'll be here for six hours, so it's the right time to use the bathroom. Once inside, we'd have nowhere to exit, so everyone made sure to prevent a future disaster. All of us went to the bathroom one at a time. And when we were set, Sai spoke. There's no way I could hold my piss for six hours, even if I went directly before we locked ourselves up. I slapped a piss in the corner. Sure, if we're gonna do this, let's do it well. We're dealing with a culprit who's teleported and gone back in time before, so regardless of whether they're one of us or not, we need to keep that in mind. We need to make sure the door won't be open no matter what, but a single key can ruin them. He went to grab the bedroom key that I'd left on top of the drawers. Katai, are you sure the key to the other bedroom won't work? I said it earlier, they're not interchangeable. So I moved from one room to another and came back with the key for the neighbouring bedroom. You're right, they're different. He attempted to insert the wrong key into the door's keyhole, but only went halfway in. He went to return it and close the door behind him once he'd come back to the hallway. Now, there have been instances where we thought that the second Maya might have teleported. The first time was when it appeared in the storeroom, but recently it appeared inside the cabinet next to Eastland. Atsuki and Shiroya could have put it there, but if they didn't, they might have teleported itself. That's not at all a random location either. So if it was part of the culprit's plan, there's a chance they understand how to exploit this, exploit this self-teleportation. It's more likely they moved it themselves, but keep this in mind. If that's what happened, they must have traveled from the future because we'd inspected the whole building before that point. If we're going to stay here until the end, that means that none of us will have the chance to go back in time and move the second mile. 
The four main possibilities are the culprit isn't one of us and we kept missing it. The Sekimaya teleported there randomly. The culprit made the Sekimaya teleport here without touching it. One of us will go back to the past after spending six hours here. No matter which one is right, before we lock ourselves away, we need to thoroughly inspect this bedroom, both levels. If a Sekimaya is already here, the imprisonment won't mean anything to the culprit, as they could just leave any time and make sure that nobody else is in range. However, a key would be would do the trick too. And we've seen that in re that replication. In some ways has occurred. We found two identical suitcases and two Naomi's. He didn't mention it, but even though I hadn't seen both at the same time, two Sekimaya had to have existed too, at least at one point. Searching for an extra key to this bedroom might sound paranoid, since nothing indicates it exists, but it's necessary. If we ignore these precautions, we're leaving a potential way for the culprit to escape at any time. They have higher knowledge of the Sekimaya than we do, so nothing tells us that they wouldn't be able to open, obtain the key that they knew they'd later use, use it to escape, go back to the past and preemptively hide a replicated key inside, knowing that we'd lock ourselves in here. Yeah, our intention is to be safe in here, so let's search around beforehand. They're saying be safe, but at the same time you and Psy keep implying that one of us is the culprit. They might have already killed three times, so if what we're doing goes against their plan, instead of escaping in this fancy and ridiculous way, won't they just kill us? I wouldn't say they'd have an easy time of it, but let's see. Culprit, if you're actually here, we're going to lock ourselves in this room for six hours. If you intend to at some point kill us to continue with your plan, hurry up and do it now before you need to deal with breaking the door down. Nobody moved, but it was clear that we all had our guard up. If the culprit was around and didn't care about killing us, if they had if they had to, the right call would likely to be start after we were locked inside so that nobody could run away. It's not like we it's not like anyone has really spoken up against the plan, right? It might even be that by staying here, we're not at all doing something inconvenient for the culprit. In any case, it's undeniably safer than continuing to roam around. That seemed to assuage Arkado's wor worries. The six of us went to the upper section of the bedroom to inspect it. I used that time to try and prevent something really bad from happening. Her size insistence had made me realise something else was, was to come. The space was small, so we shortly determined that there were no keys anywhere. We repeated the process below, and once again, it seemed nothing had been preemptively hidden, revealing that nobody had already attempted to outsmart us. We're ready then. Don't be silly, we're missing the most important part. What do you mean? We need to search everyone. Someone could currently have the key. Of course, as I thought, so I wouldn't miss such an obvious procedure. It was very important to do it, but in our situation, it means something else. The key to Naomi's locker that I kept on myself was about, likely about to be found. Shiroya must have been aware of it too. As soon as I'd found myself in that unavoidable situation, there was nothing I could have done without being seen. I didn't even manage to prepare a risky trick before we'd gone up the ladder and I'd already begun to run through the possible excuses while foolishly regretting not having hid it in the bathroom. When we were up top, I made sure nobody had the funny idea of leaving anything hidden for later. I'm very sure that right now both sections of this bedroom don't contain anything the culprit has deliberately left. I'll begin. Sai showed us the contents of every one of his pockets, his hip pack, his shoes. He held the original key to the bedroom, but he'd been gripping it since before we'd started to look around. However, he took something else from one of his back pockets. This is the key to my house, and my identification, and this is the ticket for today's event. I have nothing else on myself. Let's all do the same. Oh no, you don't mean to say that proves you're clean, do you? My objection had a reason behind it. That method of showing me... of showing we don't didn't possess anything was a very disadvantageous for me. Even though letting them find my key wouldn't have been the worst, Shiroi and I would have become very suspicious, and if anyone realised what the key was for, they would have all seen the Sekimaya in the locker. Furthermore, it would bring back the commo commotion Edna had been trying to eliminate. That was why I took the single chance I believe I had. No, of course. Do you want me to get naked? He said it earlier. If we're going to do this, let's do it well. You could have a key under your clothes, yes, but you don't have to undress. I walked up to him, and like a security agent, I began patting his body from top to bottom. Alright, now you can say you're clean. Well, thank God. I was going to do this too. Don't worry, let's continue with you then. I just wanted to make sure, and that's fine, since you won't find anything. I immediately knew I had sounded a little off. It may have been on purpose though, to set the expectation that nothing would be found on myself. As such, when he got the right pocket of my pants, he looked at me with a frown, noticing I'd been incorrect. Oh? I took a brief moment of surprise to take out what he felt in my pocket. Oh, alright, I'd forgotten I'd kept this key here. With two fingers I was gripping the second of my cabinet key. I moved aside and placed it on top of the drawers. 
I'll leave it here. We need to lock ourselves inside with it, as I said before. I tried to appear nonchalant, I walked back until the side and continued. Like I'd done to him. He finished checking the lower part of my body. Okay, you're clean too. Katai, mind being next? I took a deep, discreet breath. Kiroi had been fixed her eyes on me, but I attempted not to meet them. I stepped back and Katai took my place. I moved to Shiroya's side. She was probably wondering if I had already gotten rid of the key. Later, without being heard, I'll have to tell her what I'd done. Despite how things seemed, it was still located in my right pocket. Before going up the ladder, I thought that I only had one way to avoid being found out. I would have easily been noticed if I had attempted to leave the key somewhere. Taking advantage of the fact that I also had the cabinet key, and that it was a bit bigger, I'd put the lockers, which had been in my back pocket, in the same pocket as the cabinets. Until that point, I'd avoided keeping both together so I didn't produce metallic noises as I walked. Since the locker key was small, I purposely put it horizontally behind the cabinets so that the side pressed his hand on it and only noticed the bigger shape at the front. Fortunately, I've been able to abuse this minor surprise by taking out the cabinet key and leaving the smaller one inside. When the body inspection had proceeded, he'd already assumed the right pocket was clean and hadn't checked it again. Hmm, what's this? I looked up, Sai was feeling one of Katai's pockets and it appeared he'd found something inside. That time, it was Sai who first put his hand in and retrieved, yet again, a key. Oh right, I'd also forgotten I had this. We all recognised it, the old looking key we found on the floor, floor of hallway A. Didn't he say he kept it somewhere safe? I forgot, but don't worry, my pocket's plenty safe. After staring at it, Sai put the key back in. In the next pocket he found something else, but the third time in a row there were keys. You know, these four as well, one's for the bathrooms, other, another is for the security room, this one opens my locker in the staff room, and this one's for the door leading to floor 2. Suddenly Sai fished, finished the inspection without finding anything else. Still unsatisfied, he took out all the keys at once again, and attempted to insert them into the door's keyhole. They don't work. You're done then. He gave back the keys to Katai, and before the next person could be examined, I voiced a thought. That first key, could it be for the hidden door we found? I just thought the same thing. We both have this feeling of being fairly old, and there's no other door in this building that does. Huh, he might be right actually. We thought the culprit might have dropped it in a hurry. If that's what happened, that could be the reason why they had to remove the handle. But the key spent a long time on the floor, so I wonder why they didn't retrieve it before we found it, since at the same point they must have already left the suitcase in hallway sink. We went quiet at the mention of the suitcase. We more or less assumed that Naomi had left it there, but we weren't sure anymore. You're right, maybe they wanted to avoid every possibility of being spotted and didn't want to step in the hallway, eh? The fingerprints that you saw, are they clear enough to be useful? If the police can figure out who they belong to, that could be a path to the culprit. I'm not sure. The clearer ones were all replaced by mine, but there might have been some more around because you need to push the wall in order to open it. I see. If the culprit doesn't erase them upon realising that we found them, some should still remain. If they're one of us though, the fingerprints won't mean anything since it won't be provable that they were left before we found the door. Yeah, there's one more thing too. When we discovered the secret door, my first thought was that someone must have bypassed our searches while hide by hiding them. However, even though the light wasn't very bright, what Shiroi and I initially saw were three distinguishable fingerprints. I don't think any were overlapping. I mean that the door had recently opened only once. From hallway A, maybe. If it was only opened once, it can't be that someone went to hide there all the times that we searched unless they spent hours inside. They'd maybe indicate that it wasn't one of us though. So. Huh. I suppose they could have used the second mind to teleport inside without opening the wall, but that doesn't sound likely. Anyway, who's next? Alright, alright, we're gonna wrap this one up here because we're out of time for today. Um, but uh, the secret passage is interesting, not that we actually got to find out what was behind that door, but... I'm hoping we do get to find out what's behind that door. I think locking ourselves in a single location for the duration that we have left, while not a particularly interesting thing to do, is definitely a safe and smart thing to do if we're trying to get out of this without being murdered. Which, you know, is probably pretty important. But we'll see how that goes, because obviously there's no way that that can go well, considering we're still in Chapter 1, and uh, we get a lot more game left to play. So, it's not going to be that simple. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much. Thanks for taking it out for me, and I'll see you in the next one.